Okay, Christina and Marta, it's very good to see you again. I just want to speak to you about your new collaboration with the London Wine Fair and Sustainable Wine Solutions. Can you give me a, a quick sort of outline of what the collaboration is all about? First of all, the collaboration with Sustainable Wine uh, Wine Solutions is has been going on for a long time. They're a member of the Proto Protocol and talking and accelerating the conversation in regards to reusable bottle schemes has been going on for months. And in fact, we were already in the middle of thinking of a, a joint event when this opportunity with the London Wine Fair uh, came to life. So we were speaking with the London Wine Fair and suddenly Christina just popped out and said, why don't we reuse your bottles? And we knew in advance when we, we did this that we could count on Sustainable Wine Solutions as a partner, not only because reusable bottle schemes is what they do, but also because they're bold enough to embark on a quest like this, because it's it's an initiative, but it is a huge challenge that we're embarking on. So, uh, and London Wine Fair was bold enough as well to go along with it and to embark on this adventure. On one hand, we will be collecting the bottles, but above all, we will be uh, generating data that we do not have so far, and that will be absolutely key to continue this conversation and to really boost the discussions on reusable bottle schemes worldwide. And that's all we want. We want to collect the bottles. We want to build a report and identify what type of bottles, how many shapes, how many colors, uh, how many uh, labels we were able to take off, how many broke, how many are actually reusable, and then reuse the bottles in the end. So if you take the London Wine Fair, for example, I, when I've been there, there seems to be bottles flying around in every single direction. How many are you anticipating you're going to be dealing with? 30,000, I think, uh, that the, uh, based on the number of bottles that each one will bring for their wines. How many of those fall into categories that you think, estimating how many you think will be realistically reusable? I don't yes, think we, we can are not able to assess that. Even Sustainable Wine Solutions has done a pilot with restaurants, but the data was not enough to take those kind of conclusions. So that's why this initiative, it means also to get this kind of data that is not available any, uh, nowadays. Okay, and the data that you accumulate, how do you see that actually catalyzing bottle reuse schemes on a wider scale? Where does it actually come in in a pragmatic sort of useful sense? I think in a variety of ways. Because Sustainable Wine Solutions does this for a living, so to speak, and because we've been speaking to bottle schemes all over the world, we know in advance what are some of the issues that these schemes face, namely when it comes to the bottles, the amount of, 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 uh, of the variety you have in circulation, the amount of the, the, dif the difficulty in washing off the labels. And so by identifying, if we think of the London Wine Fair, in a way, it's a sample of the universe that the wi wine world is, okay? You have every country that produces wine, every bottle shape, every label, you have everything. So it's like when you do proper research in which you have a sample of the universe, that's what we'll have. Uh, but what we're calling this is research in action. So we will actually be able to take this bubble and study it and understand how many bottles are there. And maybe we will realize that, and this, this is the type of assumptions we are making be because of the experience we combine with these two organizations, maybe we'll be able to recognize that many of the producers actually use the same bottle. Maybe there are not so many producers using diff different bottles. Maybe only a few will have embossing or such a heavy bottle that they can they really don't want to go down. Maybe we realize that some of the thresholds that we were thinking are not there. Yeah. And maybe we realize that some of the labels from a specific country are more easily washable than from and, others. And even uh, understanding that sometimes we will have so little difference between two different types of bottle that it doesn't make sense to exist the two types okay so yeah. this is the the kind of thing that probably we will we will find 
The UK is a good example of a country where you do have wines from literally all over the world in the shops because traditionally we we don't produce that much wine. And on the flip side, we also consider ourselves to be pretty good recyclers. Can you talk about where recycling actually falls short and where the future of reusable bottles has a real place? I think we have there are two different things, okay? So first of all, let's talk about recyclable. The fact that a bottle is recyclable does not mean that it actually happens, it goes to the recycle uh, in. <laughs> process, yeah? yeah? And in the UK has a, a rate of 70% More, recyclability, yeah. which is good. But that means that 30% of one of the top five wine uh, wine markets in the world goes to uh, landfills. Which is enormous. And, yes. It's, it's enormous, enormous, but uh, compared to other countries, is nothing. If we're looking right. to the US, uh, well, the numbers are completely different. And even with other countries in Europe, uh, of course, we have others that have uh, above... Uh, rates above this number, but uh, nevertheless, it's huge. But it means that billions of bottles go to landfill, okay? And so this is the first stage, actually, just to think that the fact that something is recyclable, but that doesn't mean that it actually is. The second, a wine bottle is robust, it's inert, and even if you use it several times, it doesn't lose any of these qualities. And though we're talking about something that's like almost a myth in the wine industry, the fact is, as you probably know, Nick, this existed many years ago. And second, and that's one of the things we've been doing as a team, is we've been identifying, speaking with a variety of reusable bottle schemes all over the world that work in different ways, but that exists. And, and they are alone, they are in bubbles. And with this data, and first, this is something that we have already, we are already doing, bringing them together. And this data really gives a basis for for this uh, acceleration and why why is reuse uh, why is it a next step? First of all, one solution doesn't fit all, and we're not saying that this is the solution. This is one one of the solutions, and one of the things we know, though we need more data, is for example from a study that was done in Spain with a project called Rewind a few years ago. We know uh, due to life cycle analysis that took place that a reusable bottle scheme is financially and envi environmentally sustainable within a certain perimeter, within a certain area, okay? So, of course, this is a solution, but it's not the only solution in any way. Reusing will basically use the normal characteristics of a bottle that can be, re it just simply can be reused. Whereas, for example, if you have a plastic bottle, a PET, it cannot be reused, a glass bottle does not lose its characteristics. So it's complex. It's not, it's not complicated, it's complex. To add to that, Marta, I think we're seeing other industries like the beer industry, that this is the, the their norm in terms of delivering the bottles and bringing the empty ones back. So it's done by other drink businesses. So why not wine? <laughs> you know that, for example, France has serious legislation for wine producers regarding reusable bottles and the European Union is currently discussing reusable for the wine yeah. industry. So again, doing this as quick as possible is anticipating the, the, the issues that will come with the legislation. What's your understanding of the producer's perspective at the moment? The first answer to the, the answer to the first question is no. We have not uh, liaised with producers that will be exhibiting at the fair regarding this particular topic. If there's one topic that we know a lot about is reusable bottle schemes. We've spoken to many worldwide, and whenever we bring this topic to the table, we get different reactions. People that simply don't believe in it and that think it's something really far away which is fair enough, it is, and we want to make it closer, okay? That's one of the reasons why this work is being done, and it was it was being done before, uh, before this initiative. And some that are on their own doing it. I mean, yeah. so to give you two completely different examples, we have, we, we, did, we have a member in Portugal and one in the US and one in France, for example, they're 
the three of them are using refilling bottles or having return bottles in their own way, in completely different ways. Okay, uh, one, uh, two of them are using in the in the tasting rooms. Uh, one of them has gone further and is actually collecting uh, has done a from... partnership uh, to launch a wine in a, a reusable bottle. Actually, Diana, that we were just telling you about, Diana Says and Melissa Saunders, both from the US, they've launched a brand called Cousin Snowden in a reusable bottle. We know a producer in Portugal that he collects every single bottle he can and has his own washing facility and reuses those bottles and puts a label that is bigger than the ones that were there before, not to have to wash them off. And the interesting thing is the reason why he started doing it, and that's important for this conversation, is he didn't do it for environmental reasons. He did it because he couldn't find glass bottles because of the scarcity that we experience and because they were too expensive. Interesting. Looking at it from the consumer perspective, I mean, consumers are already exploring a wide range of formats across different beverages. How much of a say do you think the wine drinker has in this cycle of production to consumption because if there is a reusable aspect they they kind of become involved in that process is you know one step different to going to a bottle bank if it's going to be reused for example is there any data or any sort of insights into how the consumer fits in and what they think of it and so on first of all we must acknowledge that most consumers don't know that packaging is by far the biggest contributor to car of twine's carbon footprint so not even knowing why should we have a reusable bottle scheme, they don't know what the problem is in the first place. And that is the problem in the first place that we're addressing. So we have an issue of consumers' awareness of what the problem is with wine when it comes to uh, a warming climate. And so, no, there is no data in regards to that. We know that not necessarily in wine, but there is, for example, in the UK, where we're going to start with this initiative, a growing number of consumers are going into reusable packaging. Uh -huh. So this is actually perfect market to launch this. But there is no data the period when it comes to reusable. And that's yes. why we are also why this is so important, because there is no data and we are going to generate data with a true sample with a not in a lab, a lab or university but a real one it's not on refillables but uh, there is a, a new report on the uk supermarkets i don't know if you have come across that identifies like beer wine and spirits to be the most contributing in terms of environmental impact the most contributing in terms of packaging looking at all of the goods that are sell in the supermarket so i think this is also a highlight to the consumers that go to the supermarket understanding that yes. when you're choosing a bottle of wine you know that the packaging is by far the, the one that is stronger in terms of environmental impact. Has, from all it has the biggest share of, share, share of packaging, if you can call it that. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. And I, I think once articulated properly, I think it could resonate very well because people want to do better. And if you ask people yeah. what they do, they always say, oh, well, I do recycle, which is obviously, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a small element, but it, important. That's, right. but... That's I think, one of the things that we are debating if, if we really need a parallel system where people give the, the the bottle back to the supermarket or other places, or can we use the recyclable systems that we have in place and shape them and transform them into reusable? So that would be a norm, not something parallel that is happening. So I think those kind of discussions will be arised from, from this study and from bringing the stakeholders, because the idea is after this study, Study, we will gather uh, different stakeholders into a, like a think tank to analyze and think about the results and finding some answers or quite new questions or whatever. We don't know. Sure. Because I think in, in the UK a few years ago, I remember talking to someone who was who had a wine tap in their bar and they, they were saying that, well, you know, we recycle more than we actually need in the UK, which also creates this sort of excess problem. So if you introduce this whole idea of reusing, I think people would be pleased to be part of a solution rather than just a worsening problem. Yeah. Um, 
If you fast forward a, a couple of years from now, where would you like to see this project? That's a question we haven't yeah. thought of yet. <laughs> no, but we are already yeah. challenging uh, and even starting the conversation with some other wine firms. So we hope to bring more data on. Ultimately, we want to make this more yeah. standards. Nick, so far, think again, when when producers and even other stakeholders think, think of reusable bottle schemes, it's a, something... It's not a reality, and we want this to become a reality. Again, it's not the only solutions, but it definitely makes sense. In, For example, if you think of countries in the old world, where a lot of the wine that is that is bought and consumed is, lo is local wine, I mean, why, why isn't this yeah. a reality? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make business sense. It doesn't make environmental sense. It's 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 just uh, it's we want this to be a reality in some years from now. So the norm will be uh, everything to be reusable. Okay, so we don't need to to use more resources to build up new material where we have already so many in this case packaging available to use. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So there's no such thing as throwing away. We keep it in the cycle and we're yeah, reusing exactly. it. Reusing. Yeah. Yeah. We've spoken about PP and we spoke about sustainable wine solutions, but it was very bold of the London Wine Fair to to go ahead with this because we're not looking at the waste stream that these events generate. We just look at the glamour and the tasting the wine. You taste a little bit and all goes to waste. And we're not looking at the amount of waste they generate. So they looked at the waste in the eye and really took a step forward in terms of the solution. Because it's fair to say that they already transformed the bottles into silica, again, into sand. And sustainability is all that they are about this year. So they're really walking their talk. So okay. I think it's fair to also give them credit for yeah, the give them credit that. because they were very bold in taking our challenge. Well, it's very interesting. And when will the report come out, and where will it be accessed? It will be well, accessed through the Porto Protocol, of course. We need to agree uh, in terms of the specific data with Sustainable Wine Solutions and London Wine Fair to agree on how the launch will be done, of course, spreading across our network and an open source of information. And you guys will be at the fair? Yeah. Yes, we all have a stand there. And where can visitors come and find you and chat about this? Discovery, Discovery Zone. Zone. DZ14, I've got DZ14, here. yes, that's it. We will have that uh, climate talk on the central stage on the 17th at noon, where we'll be talking as Sustainable Wine Solutions and some other players from the UK that are willing to talk about this topic as well. And we'll have a tasting, I think, with Jane Parkinson, like a sustainable tasting, okay? So not only looking at how the wine... <laughs> feel in your, in your mouth but uh, explaining how the uh, how did it come to reality in terms of environmental practices and the sustainable path that they have been through very good well look, thank you very much it's been very good to speak to you and uh, you too looking forward to seeing the the actual report so <laughs> You put, you'll be exhausting after counting all those bottles. Jesus. <laughs> no, we, 